Welcome to the Good Intention Show, coming to you live on the UI Radio Network. The Good Intention Show is sponsored by the United Intentions Foundation at unitedintentions.org, a virtual community where you learn to create, track, and manifest your passions one intention at a time. Look for us on Blog Talk, Spreaker, iTunes, Stitcher, Player FM, and many more. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram under United Intentions and on Twitter at Higher Intention. Yes, this is the Good Intention Show, where you will meet people who live life intentionally and hear about things they're not telling you in the mainstream media. And now, here's the truth seeker, the snake charmer, a legend in his own mind, broadcasting live all over the universe, your host, Mr. Tim Ray. Yes, the moment you all been waiting for, at least I have been, and I am just beyond excited because I have the one and only the good Dr. Bruce Lipton with us again today, and I'll be bringing him in here in a second. And folks, we're going to be talking about things with Dr. Bruce Lipton that we've probably never spoke to before. Uh, I'm sure he has probably in many different circles, but I don't know. We'll take it to another level. We're going to be talking about the dark side of humanity. Uh, what do we need to do to go through our darkness to become embraced in our loving loving selves? Is that is that one of the ways we have to do it? We're going to find out today what that actually means. And is are we living in a scary place right now in a universe, in a, in a world that is falling apart? Or is this all part of the divine insanity plan here? We're going to find that out too, of course, with the one and only Dr. Bruce Lipton. And guys, you have to understand who he is. Uh, many of you all know in our circles, in our circles, you know exactly who he is. But the folks who are time, chiming in the first time perhaps never heard of Dr. Bruce Lipton. Uh, he's an international recognized leader in bringing science and spirit, and right, stem cell biologist. Back in the 60s, this guy was doing stem cell research. I mean, it seems like it just came out now, you know, right? Uh, he's basically, uh, we spoke out in the past, we, he's basically uh, discovered with the, with, the, with the latest scientists back in, I think it was in the 80s, that the brain of the cell is not in the nucleus. It's in the cell membrane, which changed the whole dynamics became the whole epigenetics and signal transduction and everything else uh, he's spearheading that in addition to and then of course he's discussing subconscious programming and how it really runs a show i mean you think you're in charge really not it's our subconscious which is probably a million times more powerful than anything else and and what we could do to deal with that and he'll be sharing that grin with uh, unity north this august 20th you're not going to want to miss that too dr bruce Lipton will be there as well. So let me say hello to our 99.1 FM listeners and our WTTA 101.2 in Kentucky, Ohio. And of course, everyone on the UIMediaApp.com all around the world, as well as the Facebook and, and, and God, what else? iHeartRadio, you name it. I don't know where. I've run all of them. And on top of that, I want to say hello to our new uh, host, Dr. Charles Krieger, comes on today at 5 p.m., right, with his uh, founder of the American Posture Institute, talking about this topic which no one's talking about digital dementia our kids are suffering from digital dementia what's happening with cell phones overuse of cell phones it's actually creating dementia behaviors in the mind you guys not going to want to miss it at five o'clock today so check it out and also uh we have a coast tomorrow with uh, holly emery a phd author coach barbara van uh, mattaheim and she'll be here incredible story you'll listen to tomorrow as well on the good intention show but without further ado, and guys, let me tell everybody out there who's watching live, uh, do a fate, do a uh, watch party. Go out, go right now, get a watch party going on. Get your friends and friends and friends of your friends involved, because this is going to be a party, but a party that's going to bring light and love to our our lives and let you know that things may be out there very scary. They may seem scary on the surface, but we're going to dig deeper with Dr. Bruce Lipton to find out that it's not. This is exciting times to be alive. And exciting things are coming our way. So without further ado, let's bring in the good doctor and say hello. Well, hello, Dr. Bruce Lipton. Well, hello, Mr. Legend Tim. <laughs> How are you, my dear friend? <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a surprise to meet you here online. Wow, what a coincidence. <laughs> Like we believe in coincidence. I just happened to be here in front of the computer, and there you are. <laughs> I, know, I, wow. did, I don't. I just don't. I just don't understand. I, I'm so excited about you being in person in Georgia. Uh, right now, you got Unity North, which is my church I grew up in, and uh, Glinda, and you got Richard Burdock. Everybody there is so excited about having you. You'll be there August 20th, and uh, you're coming in town. Um, you know, you come in and go out, and they probably have you so booked, you don't know which way you're going. <laughs> I am so excited because, uh, yeah, as you mentioned earlier, this this is a strange time, but it's a really remarkable time. Uh, and if you look at it one way, it's scary as hell. 
But if you really can see what's going on, all of a sudden everything makes sense. That's what that's the beautiful part. And we're we're heading towards something very, very wonderful. And you can be sharing that with with that Unity North here on the 20th, right? Absolutely, and I hope to share some of it right here, right now. All right, we definitely will. In fact, uh, if guys want tickets for Unity North on August 20th, go to unitynorth.org and pick them up. There's, I'm sure they'll be sold out if they're not already, but I'd get them quickly if, if, if that was the case. Okay, so let's start out with this. Before we go too much into what appears to be the darkness, the chaos, this insanity, the fear is at such high levels. Thank you, media, farm, Big Farm, and everyone else we'll talk about here shortly. Uh, Teal Swan mentioned to me that, you know, there's this denial-based positive thinking, and then there's positive thinking. And when when you're in denial-based positive thinking, it's more so fear is driving the, I got to think positive, I got to think positive, I got to think positive, I think positive, <laughs> the bad things are going to be attracted to be the law of attraction, right? And then you have that state of being when you're in the knowing, right? So h- how do you, how do you distinguish that for yourself and then how you can share with everyone else how they can make sure that they're really in state of joy and not denying themselves of what not be through, you know, feel pain and suffering. Well, uh, the hardest thing that we have to understand right now is that people look at the world and go, uh, oh, wow, this is so crazy and what's going on. And they take themselves out like I'm a victim of world situation. Yeah. And we've been programmed to be that way because when you're a victim, by definition, it means you're powerless and everyone's sitting around going, oh, oh, it's all going crazy uh, without recognizing that our consciousness is creating this experience. And you go, what do you, what do you mean? Uh, and, and I say, let's understand one very important fact, and that is this. Quantum physics uh, is the most valid science on planet Earth. There's no science that's been tested more and verified more than quantum physics. And so, so what? And I go, because principle number one of quantum physics is consciousness is creating your life experience. Uh, and that's that's a principle of science. And then, of course, people will go right out there right now. Look, I wouldn't think of this conscious. This is not my consciousness. Look what's going on out there. It's not me. It's that. Uh, and that's the disempowering part. Uh, and what the new science reveals is clearly this, is that uh, our consciousness is of two different levels. There's conscious, higher, and subconscious operating below the level, sub, below, consciousness Uh, uh, and the idea is this the movie the matrix everyone thinks well Mm. that's a science fiction movie and it's really a documentary uh that everyone's been programmed that is a requirement Uh, and you say well why and i say well the brain is like a computer great and as it's developing it has an operating system great and i say so what well you get a brand new computer with an operating system and you turn it on and it boots up and there it is and i say now do something and all of a sudden you realize well, I got an operating system, but I can't do anything. Why? Because I don't have any programs. Uh, write, read, spreadsheet. I say, okay, so guess what? The human brain and the fetus is developing. It has now an operating system, no programs. And it's like, well, how are you going to operate this? And the answer is the first seven years of a child's life, from the last trimester of pregnancy, first seven years, the brain is not operating at a level of consciousness in a child at that age. It's operating at a vibration lower. Now, vibration, that's not new agey right here. Uh, Vibration is put wires on a person's head, electroencephalograph, EEG, read brain function, which is vibration. And that uh, a conscious person has a higher vibration than a child uh, seven years and under because a child has a vibration, a lower one called theta, in brain function, that's the related to imagination. Right. That's why. That's why. That's why kids have a tea party. They pour nothing into the cup and and they drink nothing and they talk about how wonderful the tea was. <laughs> uh, that's theta. Right. But it's also hypnosis, and the relevance for that is this: a child needs to know how to become a member of a family and a community. If you try to give a a book to a child with how many rules does it take to be a member of a community, uh, it'll be a thousand pages. So this so fear, say, well, th- this fear, Doc, yeah. you're saying is programmed at a young age when we're in theta and at this lower vibrational consciousness, this fear is developed. Is it, is it more just because it's a reticular activation system or is it just through our experiences, fear is there, so it's a predominant feeling? 
No, it's a, it's a learned experience learned because experience. Look, think about this. An infant's born and it's just love. That's yeah. what an infant is, just love. Mother and infant are just like, boom, love. Okay, right? But a child doesn't know life experiences until they have an experience. So uh, whatever is going on in the family, and this is interesting because it's whatever was going on between mother, father, and family, even before birth, is part of the programming of that that child so I, I mean if the mother plays music every day to the fetus through the abdominal wall right when the baby's born it will know the music yes. it learns it okay right. sure. and so there's learning going on uh and this is where the program begins uh, and for the next seven years it learns life not by reading and studying it learns life by just observing other people and downloading them so theta is like a video recorder it records life experience, but it pops it down subconscious. Conscious is not even created. And the problematic is uh, there's no filtering of the program <laughs> because you're not there. You're just downloading. So good programs, bad programs, they're all just being downloaded with, with no discrimination. Uh, and I say, so what's the relevance of that? And I go, well, uh, the, the unfortunate part is, yes, I said that there are two minds, conscious mind, the one that we'd love to be in, because that's the creative mind, right. wishes, desires, mm -hmm. and all that. Subconscious mind, just program, download from other people. And it turns out, when a person is thinking, where's conscious mind when you think, you know, I, I'm having a thought, is conscious mind out here, or is conscious mind in there? And the answer is, it's inside. So, you know, I say, Tim, uh, uh, tell me what you're doing on Saturday. And as you're just sitting there right now, if it's not written in front of you, where do you find the answer? You know? Right, right. No, I, you had I, to go in your head. You had to go in your head. Exactly. Go ahead. So that, so at that moment, when you were thinking, you weren't paying attention to the outside, you were directing attention to the inside. And so I say, why is it relevant? Well, look at the body like a vehicle, got a driving steering wheel, and conscious mind when it's driving it is going toward wishes and desires. Mm -hmm. But when conscious mind is thinking, it has to let go of the wheel because now it's going to go inside. Uh, and if you're driving the car in real life and you're having a thought and your thoughts inside, then who the heck is going to drive the car? Because, you know, you never really get into an accident or anything. It turns that subconscious is autopilot. Mm -hmm. The moment conscious is busy, whatever it is, driving the car, walking, doing a job, whatever you've done repeatedly yeah. the subconscious mind can handle it and it's a million times more powerful so it's actually uh, like if you're gonna your car's going into an accident guess what conscious mind is shut off because it's too slow and the next thing you're just doing reactions uh, at speed of light almost because subconscious takes over isn't that okay? why isn't that right doctor that when you know because we spoke about this last time how you, repetition repetition and getting yourself in that threshold, how you need to change it. But isn't that because of that, that stinking thinking, that programming at that young age, that's so solid and the subconscious mind so, so strong, much stronger than our conscious mind, isn't that often why when a lot of people become, they become aware of the law of attraction. They become aware of, my God, my thoughts create my reality every nanosecond. That even then, even then, they have a hard time manifesting what they truly want is because that old stinking thinking fear is is coming in and saying, you know what, you got to think positive. Don't worry about thinking negative. But it's still being led by that 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 low frequency feeling, isn't it? A hundred percent. This is this is the whole issue. The the idea is this: when the conscious mind is thinking, and here's the number. So let's let's give this number. Ninety five percent of the day, your mind is in thought, which then by definition means ninety five percent of the day, whatever programs you got from family and community, uh, subconscious that's driving your vehicle, not you. You <laughs> let go of the control because you went inside and think. Uh, and, and so, you know, I, for 32 years, I give the same story because it's the, it's like the one that explains it. Yeah. I say, you have a friend, you know your friend's behavior very, very well, and you know your friend's parent. And one day you see your friend has the same behavior as their parents. So this excites you. You know, you got you to gotta tell them. You go, hey, <laughs> Bill, you're just like your dad. And then I say, back away from Bill. Bill's going to go ballistic. How can you compare me to my dad? I'm nothing like my dad. And people laugh a lot because that's a personal experience. I go, most profound story for the whole setup right here is this. Everybody else can see that Bill behaves like his dad. Mm -hmm. Bill does not see it. I say, well, why doesn't Bill see it? And I say, because why is he even playing that program that he downloaded by observing his dad? That's where he got the program. Why is he playing it? And the answer is, well, he's thinking. 
And I say, then, well, he's playing the subconscious program because his thinking, he's the only one who doesn't see his behavior. Right. Everyone else does because his mind is not paying attention. And so the significance is all of us are Bill. 95% of the day, we're in thought and automatic behavior, subconscious autopilot takes over. And I go, yeah, but it will only play uh, the habits that it downloaded. And 70% or so of the programs apparently that children pick up in the first seven years of programming are, are disempowering, self-sabotaging yeah, and limiting. I say, now do the math. Yeah. 95% of the day, you are playing programs as you cannot see and most of those are sabotaging. And I say, so what do you see? I say, you wake up in the morning with wishes and desires, conscious mind, that's what you want. You go out through the day, you come home at night beaten, and you go, oh my God, today, I didn't get there. Right. I, I tried, I didn't yeah. get there. Yeah. And then here's where the problem comes from, right at this moment, people go, well, I had the great wishes and desires and they didn't show up, so it's not me, it, it must be the universe, them, that, people here, uh, uh, because the individual does not see their own participation. This All is, they see is results. This is why we give the uh, best advice and we can't take our own advice because we're in thought, right? Um, we're gonna take a quick break here, Doc. We come back, let's let's pick up the conversation where we left off. And so he, we have this programming that's this negative programming and we're dealing with this and we're not in charge. 95% of the time, we're not in charge, we're in thought. So how do we take this understanding of our reality to be able to bring in a world through darkness into light when we're not even running the show. I don't know, but that's a nice cliffhanger. We're at, guys, we'll be right back with Dr. Bruce Lipton, <laughs> and we're going to have the answer here in about a minute. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Be right back. Some people believe life is hard that happiness is the destination, not part of the journey. What if you didn't believe that? Psyche is an easy, effective, and proven method to identify and replace the limiting beliefs that are stopping you from living the life you deserve. For more information about Psyche, visit my website, lindaminick.com, or call me at 678-641-7005. It's your life. It's your choice. You deserve to be happy. All right. We are back live with the legendary pioneer, Dr. Bruce Lipton, uh, a.k.a. Bruce or Doc. Yeah. And we are talking about um, our programming. And now we've discovered that, okay, we're not in charge. But yet we have this, this drive, doctor, and I know you know it, this, this calling to find our calling to pull out of the matrix, as you mentioned earlier, and to be our true authentic self, okay? Yes. Now, if if we are basically programmed to not be our true authentic self, to 95% of our day, to be some robot that was created throughout our years of negative programming, um, so the question comes down to, how, I thought I thought of repetition, but really, we're really, a subconscious mind, until the day we die, really be running the show. I mean, it is. I mean, there's only so much fixing up we could do to ourselves in the next you know, 50, 60 years, I guess, to a certain degree. So so the spiritual aspect of this has to play a exponential factor involved in moving forward with our, our calling and our sense of, of, of why we're here. Can you, can you speak to any of that? Yeah, well, you know, w one of the things that's really important is to recognize this is that, uh, as we talked about, these programs are playing continuously and we don't see them. Right. And, and the hard part for people is since the programming started in utero before you were born and went through age seven, uh, are you even aware of the program? See, this is the part that's really difficult for people. It's like they didn't know they were programming and say, what the heck is the program? Yeah. And then here comes the easy part for people. And that is this, 95% of your life comes from the program. So the point is your life is a printout of your developmental programs. I go, what does that mean? I say, hey, the things that you like that come into your life, they come in because you have a program to acknowledge that. But more importantly, anything you you desire and you have to struggle for, work hard, sweat over, put a lot of effort in, it's like you're working real hard to make this real. Why are you working so hard? And here's the beautiful part. And the answer is, inevitably, whatever that destination is, your program does not support that. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. If it's relationship and you are struggling with relationships, it's because somewhere along the line, the developmental de- program that you got does not support a loving relationship. If you're trying to succeed in life uh, and you find not good enough, not deserving, well, guess what? That relates back to when you were an infant and you heard that about yourself because your parents wanted you to do better. They criticized you. And, and the issue is that's like a coach on a team. Player's not doing well. Come on, that's not good enough. You don't deserve to be here. Who do you think you are? And a player on a team being old enough understands that, oh, the coach is saying that because I'm not doing that well. I'm going to work harder. But if a child's under seven, not in conscious mind, in hypnostate theta, then when the child hears that's not good enough, you don't deserve this, who do you think you are? That's a recording. That's Mm. all it is. Mm. Child doesn't even understand the meaning of it, just recording. I'm not good enough. I'm not deserving. I'm not lovable. It doesn't mean the parents didn't mean that that's your life. The parents just meant at that moment, you're a pain in the ass (laughs) and I'm going to say something. And yet they don't recognize if the child's under seven, the reprimand from that parent is actually downloaded as a program. And that's why about 80 to 90 percent of all of us out there will not test positive for the belief. I love myself. Mm. I say, why not? Because you've been so criticized as a as a child in their effort to make you do better that the criticisms are what are operating 95% of the day. Right. I'm not smart enough. I'm not deserving. So so what's the point? So let's let's put a little most important thing, a little box here, and that is this. The function of the mind is to create coherence between your belief and your reality. If my belief is not good enough, the mind will subconsciously not consciously, subconsciously, uh, cause you to make errors and everything. So at the end of the day, you look around and go, geez, uh, I'm not good enough. Sabotage, <laughs> sabotage. Uh, yeah, you self-sabotage, but then 95% of the day, you, while you're doing it, you're the one that doesn't see it. All you see is the result. Jeez, I didn't get the raise. Why? <laughs> it's like, Doc, this is crazy. 95% of the, my day, I'm self-sabotaging myself, honestly. And you multiply that times 7 billion people, you know, or whatever it is to count now. I mean, this is like, we're, and if we create our reality with our thoughts and feelings, create our reality, 95% of the time, we're creating a self-sabotaging, scary place, are we not? One hundred percent. And so when you look at the world, you go, God, if if this is a world of creation, who the hell is creating this? Uh, And it's like, oh, my God, I'm doing it. I'm a participant in this creation. Uh, And the reality is because we've been programmed to see that it's the outside that's doing this. We never really look inside and say, am I involved in this? Right. And the answer is quantum physics. You are creating this. So uh, we're always pointing fingers. We're always pointing fingers at other people. Well, yeah, because if you don't, why would you sabotage yourself? Yeah. That would be the conscious Makes mind. Makes no sense and, on a logical and, and, level. Yeah. And so then if somebody says, oh, you did this yourself, it's like, nah, it can't be me. I wouldn't do that. And I'm going, not in your conscious mind. You would never do that. But in your subconscious, 95% of the day, automatic program, autopilot will do that without you you know, knowing it. Uh, and, and as I said, the Matrix movie is like a documentary because <laughs> in the movie, there's a time where you take a red pill. Yes. You get out of the program. And I'm going to say most people on this line right now have already taken the red pill with the most amazing results and never knew what happened. And it was this. Science has found that when you fall head over heels in love, it's the moment you stop thinking, you stay present. I mean, you've been looking for this person your whole life. Why why think they're there in front of your face? So you be there. You stay present. I say, oh, you stay conscious. I say, what's the relevance? Conscious mind is creative, wishes and desires. Two people come together, their life could be blah, 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 blah every day, and then they meet. And guess what? At that moment of love, they stop playing the program. And guess what? Now who's controlling life? Conscious mind. What does that have? Wishes and desires. So what the heck do you think two people who've just fallen in love have done, created heaven on earth? And I say their life sucked every day until they fell in love. And 24 hours later, it's heaven on earth. I go, what the heck happened? The first time that people stop playing the program and stay mindful, that's the word. And all of a sudden I say, well, what happened? They manifest with their wishes and desires. Unfortunately, uh, in a short time, uh, thinking comes back. 
subconscious starts taking over. And love and goes the out neg- the window. <laughs> it all goes out the window because your partner never saw your negative behavior because that came from subconscious. And so you've had honeymoon with conscious wishes and desires, love. And then the first day thinking comes in and all of a sudden a bad behavior comes out. Your partner goes, who are you? Where did that come from? Because they never saw that. So, that, so that's the solution, Doc. Isn't that the solution? You got to stay in love. You just got to say love all the time. Is that the only that way out? Fabulous. Through it? Yeah, yeah. But, it, that, that is the answer. But then try and do it in a world that has so many demands. Yes. You, yes. You can't help it. That's why the honeymoon ends is because I would love to stay in that place. Uh, uh, except that now I got chores. I got to go to work. I have responsibilities. I start thinking what I'm going to be doing. And the moment you start thinking, boom. The old behavior shows up with all the negative stuff. Your partner sees that and goes, did I sign up for this? <laughs> and, and that's when the honeymoon takes a, a, a wrong turn. Yeah. Baby's over at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. You, you almost have to match your uh, programming with the other person you're in love with programming. So it's a little bit balanced. So you could, at least you could handle it to whatever degree. But it's a fascinating concept to believe that. But, you know, it's almost like you're describing, Doc, is that thoughts are a virus in a way, in, in a sense, you know, uh, to the point where it it really feeds on each other and it keeps us from healing ourselves. Oh, absolutely. Because look, we're not there and we don't even see that it's unfolding. So it's very hard to stop it. And then you say, yeah, but my conscious mind's got all the knowledge. I read the books. I went to the lecture. I heard this program right here. And it's like, I know I'm creating this. Then how the hell (laughs) am I still in the same place that I'm at? Uh, And the answer is because the conscious mind's only working 5% of the time, and the subconscious as a processor of information, a million times more powerful. You mentioned that earlier. Uh, and I says, okay, take a conscious mind with 5% and uh, with wishes and desires and contrast it with a subconscious mind, 95%, a million times more powerful and with vastly a uh, per greater percentage of negative programs. Who, yeah. Yeah. Who's going to win? Yeah. The answer is, you know, obviously, this is where the problem comes from. Every time, every day, you know, and then to compound that, to compound our negative programming at a younger age, now we got the media every day coming out. It's it's negative, negative, negative. You got the big pharma, as you're familiar with, putting in poisons, getting people unhealthy. Now you're unhealthy. You're sick. You can't think about loving relationships when you're unhealthy. You can't think about um, positive, happy things. You're just trying to survive, you know, and you add on this, 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 this experience that we're seeing now across the board, almost in every country, Doc, you know, um, and I, this is something that I think maybe you could share some insight on that, okay, it, and I'll give you my, my philosophy on it, and then you tell me where I'm wrong or what we need to do to expand on my philosophy, because I know you Absolutely. have. Is, is that here we are in this world right now, and it, is, it seems chaotic. I mean, you, you go any which direction. Politics, religions now are falling apart. There's this unsta- destabilization of countries here in the U.S., around the world. You have this chaos. Unsure. You got race rioting, fighting. You got a lot of negativity going on, or at least appearing perception of all this negativity going on, right? I believe that all this is occurring on a much higher divine level. I call it divine insanity uh, to really base us, ba- make us go within for our answers and stop going outside for our answers. What's your thoughts on that? Well, well, this is basically the whole bottom line to the resolution. How do? What are we doing? How come we're here? And, and what is the consequence? And so let's step <laughs> one step back and go like this. First of all, uh, we are facing what is called the sixth mass extinction of life on this planet. You wow. go, what the heck is that? And I go, five times in the history of this planet, life was thriving, and then some cataclysmic event occurred, and up to 90-some percent of life disappeared five times. The last time, about 66 million years ago, the fifth mass extinction, uh, recognize this. This world was almost like a tropical lush forest dense uh, with dinosaurs and all those things. And a comet hit near Mexico, a big comet hit the earth, and it upended the web of life. The environment got upended because of this massive collision. And the dinosaurs disappeared. 90% of life disappeared, and it started all over again, essentially. Uh, And now we're in the sixth mass extinction. I go, well, okay, previous, and here's the point that comes home. Previous mass extinctions are a uh, comet hitting the earth, tectonic plates moving, things like that. Uh, today, six mass extinction, right now, human behavior 
is toppling the web of life. Oh, We're wow. undermining nature. We're destroying the environment. Uh, here, here's a simple fact. Um, number one, if you were here in 1970, and it looked like, Tim, you and I were here. Yep, uh, I was. <laughs> barely, but I was here. <laughs> they took a survey of how many animals were on the planet. Total animal population, planet Earth. Uh, they just did the survey two years ago. And 63, 63% of that population has disappeared. We have only one third the number of animals that were here just in 1970. Uh, uh, and that's again, human uh, problems in creating this tissue uh, that we also know this. Uh, in Germany, they were doing a survey of insects for the last 27 years. And they found that today, the insect population is down 75% in Germany, and you go, so who cares about the insects? I say, well, you want to eat food? How about <laughs> some bees? You need some bees out there, you know? Yeah. And so we're undermining the insect world. And, and science has also recognized that the, there will be, and this is like science fiction, there will be no fish in the ocean 2048. Hold that thought for a second. You're saying there'll be no fish in the ocean by 2048. That is is unbelievable scare because I know the bees are disappearing right now. Doc, we can take another quick break here. When we get back, let's pick up on that too of the sixth uh, extinction going on right now because of the human mind and thought process of how we're not in charge of what we're doing. And we'll get into our solutions, guys, to what we can do. And the good doctor will share with us things that we can do within ourselves to help make sure that we don't basically eliminate the world as it is today. Guys, we're talking to Dr. Bruce Lipton. Uh, he's uh, he's the pioneer of epigenetics as well as, as signal transduction and so much more he's doing, changing. He's bringing spirit and science together in many ways. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned. A lot more to come. Hello, my name is Tim Ray, founder of the United Intentions Foundation, where we help people like you untap their true potential and consciously create the reality with their power of their intentions. We're a 501c3 nonprofit foundation, and we need your help. Imagine a world where kids can be themselves and just create, a world where businesses thrive under mindful thinking, an education program that teaches people to tap into their mind and create their ideal world with no hesitations. That's what we are doing at the United Intentions Foundation, and that's what we are accomplishing. Each time you donate to this movement, you help fund our Imagine If program, where we talk to children in schools and teach them the benefits and powers of creating the reality they want to experience. With each donation, you also help fund our online community, where people interact and support each other through the, our social media portal. Here you can create intentions, show gratitude, and connect with people all over the world. Our world is suffering from a crisis of perception, from childhood to adulthood. We have to shift our perception now and begin empowering all with the power of our intentions so we can live in a positive future. But this can only continue to happen if you continue to donate. So please, click a reoccurring or a one-time donation. Now is the time. Yes, welcome back to the UI Media Network on the Good Intention Show with Tim Ray. And I am here with uh, not only um, Dr. Bruce Lipton and everything that comes along with him, but I have to say, though, you know, Doc, and I'll tell you now, because I know I mentioned maybe the first show I had you on, is that you really were the inspiration of this whole network. Uh, you started, I mean, I really, I was, I was reading your stuff way back when, and it blew my mind when I realized that the, uh, the brain of the cells, not in the nucleus, they're still sharing that in biology classes today, the brain's the nucleus. And, and knowing that it's not, it's in the cell membrane, shifts the whole gambit of empowerment and not empowerment, you know? And so uh, to me, that was the telltale why I'm like, wow, the power of intention, power of thought, I need to get that out there. And you really are, I wouldn't be here right now with all the folks who work with us and the, the, we reach millions of people over time. Honestly, we do. Uh, it wasn't for you. And I, I don't want to, I know you're a humble man and you probably don't really, um, you probably blow it off, but I just want you to know that's the, that's the authentic truth right there. So guys, we're, well, <laughs> we're talking to Dr. Bruce Lipton about, you want to say something? Go ahead. Yeah, because the whole idea is this. It's not so much the information, it's activation of the information uh -huh. that makes all the difference in the world. Information's been available, but it takes people like you to say, wait, I got to stop doing this and start doing this. And that's when people 
have the power to take over control of their life. And what you're doing then is illustrating to people is like, no, there's another way to do it. Mm. Yes, absolutely. So we're talking about the extinction, the sixth extinction. I'm so glad I don't remember, I don't remember any of them except maybe the one coming up now. But um, yeah. what, what's the beautiful part about it, and I think you're alluding to this too, doctor, is that the that um, that all of a sudden now we're realizing this through quantum physics, through spiritual understanding, that we're much more powerful beings. There are much more than just this three-dimensional limited bandwidth reality that we call the world, right? There's something beyond yeah. the veil. But this, this thoughts and feelings that you've been discussing is actually creating our reality. So if we could create a reality for destruction, that means we could also create a reality for heaven as earth. Is that not true? 100%. And this is where the chaos that we're in right now is. Uh, uh, let, let's just, you know, you used the word chaos before. So some people think chaos is random. I said, no, no. Chaos, there's a pattern, but it's so complex that we can't see it. In other words, the story of the butterfly flapping its wing and changing uh, the weather, uh, you know, somewhere else on the planet, that, that's an actual fact. So if you want to predict the weather, not only do you have to predict all kinds of things, but you have to predict all the butterfly wings <laughs> because they're part of the equation. Right. And you start to realize there, there's too much data. Yeah. So you can suggest what the weather is going to be. But if you could put all the data into the machine, you can tell you exactly what the temperature is going to be right now where you are and predict predict everything. And so I say, what's the difference? Random and chaos. Uh, random means it's random. Who knows what the heck is going to happen? Chaos says, while well, you may not see because of too much information what's going on, there's a pattern and it's unfolding. So when you say that we're in a state of chaos, the answer is yes, we are. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, a butterfly comes from a caterpillar. A caterpillar uh, then turns into a butterfly. I say, yeah, but it doesn't instantly turn in. There's something in the middle between the caterpillar and the butterfly. I say, oh, that's where the pupa, the chrysalis of the butterfly is forming. I say, well, what's happening? I say, first of all, the caterpillar is a voracious eater. It will strip a tree down or bushes down and everything. Oh, that's just like us. Uh, <laughs> ca caterpillars in human civilization are totally voracious, but they push it. They get to the end. They got all the darn leaves off the tree. Now what? Then they form a chrysalis. And the inside, the caterpillar is transforming into a butterfly. I say, then what's happening? I say, if you open up that chrysalis, it's a mess inside. You see all kinds of things breaking down and stuff, but some things are building up. So it's not an accident what's going down. Caterpillar structure breaking down, butterfly structure coming up in the middle. What the heck is going on? It's, it, it looks random, not random. There's a plan. Every cell is going somewhere. So when I say, where are we now? We're between the caterpillar phase of human civilization and the butterfly phase. The butterfly is light touch, man. It doesn't hit the planet at all, really. Okay? <laughs> and yet in the middle is chaos. I say, so what does it represent? I say, look out your window. That's chaos. Chaos is it's falling apart everywhere. And everybody's like, oh, my God, it's falling apart. And I'm going, yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because if it doesn't fall apart, Mass extinction is is happening now. It's not a thousand years from now. It's in your life or your child's life. This whole thing's going upside down. So what's the point? The chaos we're in is representing the breakdown of a system, but simultaneously, you, uh, Tim, your followers, the community, they represent what? People that are building up something new. Absolutely. And so you're, you're seeing <clears throat> chaos because one is coming down and you're not really seeing the new one coming up, but it's coming up simultaneously. Uh, and this is profoundly important because all of the listeners out here right now, they have a choice. Uh, do you want to participate in the one coming down scary world or do you want to participate in the one building up beautiful world? Doc, how, how can that happen, choice. though? How can that happen if 95% of our brain were self-sabotaging? I mean, there, is there another variable that we're not taking into account here? Yes, consciousness can learn. <laughs> but <laughs> consciousness has to learn uh, in a different way than we've ever thought. And this is the problem of taking a life that has bad programming with, oh, my life is so... Blah. And I'm saying, you want to make a good one? I said, well, yeah, but you have to know how to program. Uh, and, and it's frustrating for people because they think, well, if I just read the self-help book, I'm going to know. And I go, you can read the self-help book because the creative conscious mind understands, but the subconscious doesn't learn that way. So all that brilliant education you got from reading the books and going to lecture, I go, that's conscious mind, 5% of the day, which means, great, you read the book, but your life isn't going to change. 
because you need to change the subconscious and it has a different way of learning. And when you understand that, you can rewrite it. And let me tell you the beautiful part. This is what's the result. If you took the wishes and desires that you hold in your conscious mind and make them programs in the subconscious mind, then that would mean 95% of the day, you're not even paying attention. And your subconscious mind, what coherence between the belief and the program, a belief of heaven on earth will lead to behaviors that will manifest heaven on earth. Uh, but if you have the unfortunate misprogramming that we all essentially came with, uh, you Heaven on earth is like a, a wish, but it's hard to get there. Uh, and so basically it's downloading. So, okay, you blew my mind. This, this, let me re, this kind of re, rephrase what you're saying here. Yeah. So basically we're in between a caterpillar and the chaos between a caterpillar and the butterfly. Uh, humanity yes. is. And, the, and you're saying the best way to see where consciousness is presently is to look outside the window because that's the reality that we're creating. So every yeah. one of those souls out there, such as myself, such as you, such as all the people listening to the show right now, um, are are literally saying themselves, I want to have an as earth. I don't I, I don't want I don't want to. I don't I don't want to. We got a call coming in. Oh, sorry. I think that's your phone there, Doug. Um we ha I, th I think we have a um we have a uh a whole sense of consciousness is a reflection outside, right? And as this reflection is coming outside, we're seeing this. So we're we don't know which way we're gonna go, other than it's so important that there are people like you and I and everyone else out there listening making sure that we try to set, make our conscious belief into our subconscious belief so we can then change the world. This is the only way out. There's, there's no other way out, is it? Is this, div is this divinity too? Is this what you call spiritual divinity? Yeah, this is, this is to wake up to who you really are. Because if you've been programmed to believe you're a victim and the function of the mind is to take programs and make it real, then we've all been victims around here. Absolutely. And, and the simple reality is, okay, we, we need to change this programming uh, to, no, I'm the creator. Then I say, oh, if you are, then what the heck do you want to create? Because it's not in your program. Right. And if you put that creation into your program, uh, and here's the truth, unconsciously, you will manifest the program. I said, what, you mean if I put wishes and desires in my subconscious, I will automatically manifest? And the answer is yes. Okay. But you won't manifest them with the programs you got now. Uh, apparently not. And this is why what you're doing and sharing and teaching is so critical for people to understand how they can reprogram or program a new neural pathway for your subconscious beliefs to create that world, that heaven on earth. However, with, with what we're saying too, I, I just think it's fascinating is that here we are in this in, in this perceived darkness. We're in this trans trans transition period of time, right? And yes. and every thought, every feeling we have, we really need to look at ourselves within, right? At the same time, we have this um, this element of like you have all these old religious programs where guilt, yeah. shame, uh, all these things are old subconscious programming and politics now, the divide and conquer. These are the old programs that you're referring to that are reflective from what was in our subconscious mind before. And as they break down, because I see them breaking down. I see religions breaking down. I see politics breaking down. Right. This is a good, good thing you're saying because now it's allowing the new program to come in place, which is more of a loving, loving, uh, higher frequency sense of vibration. Look, the famous old phrase, knowledge is power. Right. And then I'm going to go the other way. A lack of knowledge is a lack of power or a misperception as knowledge as a misperception is a lack of power. And we have been led to believe that we're victims of our genes. That's the first big one, because it basically says, oh, my God, I can't control my life. These genes are controlling my life. That's called genetics. Uh, and the new science, epigenetics, epi means above. So when I say, oh, the old story, your life is under genetic control, controlled by genes. And you got your genes. You didn't pick them as far as you know. You can't change them. You don't like them. It's tough luck. And they turn on and off by themselves. So all of a sudden, that takes you out of the picture. Cancer happened to me. I didn't have anything to do with it. It's like... There is no cancer gene, so there's a big problem. Uh, but the issue is this. That's the old belief of disempowerment, that my life is controlled by genes. Yes. The new science, epigenetic control, epi means above. So epigenetic control translates simply as control above the genes. I say, well, what's controlling genes? Consciousness is controlling your genes. <laughs> if you believe you're going to get cancer, what's the function of the mind? to manifest the coherence between your belief and your reality, you generate cancer, guess what? You don't need to even have it in your lineage. 90% of people with cancer don't even have it in their family. 
It's like, where the heck did it show up? It wasn't the genes. It's living out of harmony mm. with life. Disease is disharmony in your life. Uh, and less than 10% and presumably near 1% of disease is associated with genes. But then I say, so, okay, fine, 1%. The 99% of the people that have, have health issues uh, and we attribute, oh, the genes did this, like false consciousness did this. Why? Change your consciousness, the disease will disappear. Whether it's cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, even Alzheimer's can change when you stop buying the belief that, oh, I'm a victim of things and I have no control because the function of the mind, if I believe I'm a victim, I will manifest behavior to prove I'm a victim. Let's put this to the test. We get back from break here again, uh, uh, Bruce. Let's let's put this to the test. I'm going to give out, rattle off a few of humanity problems right now going on in the world. How can re-subconscious programming solve these problems uh, and, and bring us to a point of... of that frequency being leveled up so that other lower frequency just kind of fades away into the into the night. All right, guys, yes. we're talking to Dr. Bruce Lipton. Yes, finally, talking about the darkness of humanity, what we got to go through now and how it's a beautiful thing. It's not a scary thing. It may seem scary, but it's an exciting time to be alive because we are turning into the butterfly. Come on, we're almost there. Stay strong, stay focused. We'll be right back, guys. Stay tuned. Download the UI Media Smart App at uimediaapp.com to watch and listen to all your favorite shows anytime from anywhere in the world. Shows that enrich, entertain, educate, and feed the conscious cells throughout your body. We bring you never heard before topics in health, inspiration, music, psychics, numerology, current affairs, controversies, and much, much more. So what are you waiting for? Visit www.uimediaapp.com and start raising your frequency now. I choose happiness. Yeah, that's it, Why he Play that song. You know, it is a choice. We have free will. We're talking to free will Dr. Bruce Lipton, uh, who's telling us that we are do have a free will. You know, a lot of these religions and, you know, we power and the politics, we hand our power over to others, even doctors, even such doctors, not so much as you're a biologist, but say our, our, our doctors, we go get healed, we give them the power. Uh, and you're saying the whole time, if we just, we, we fine tune our subconscious mind, um, we could actually heal ourselves. Or we take our power back all the time. And so we have these old programs, uh, and one of the programs right now is going on is the politics. The politics is the divide and conquer. How can reprogramming ourselves eliminate this politics of, of the black against the white and the, 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 now it's gender battles. I mean, now it's the gay against the straight or it's the, it's the kid against the parent or whatever it may be. It's getting crazy. Well, it, it absolutely is. And the idea is this, divide and conquer separated because here's a very important fact that will open it up and it goes like this growth means you go to a stimulus and you open your arms and take it in growth i assimilate it i take it in i say what about protection i go oh you go away from the stimulus and you close yourself down i say what's the point i say can you be in growth and protection at the same time and the answer is no you can't be open and closed at the same time you can't go forward and backward at the same time so if you put people into fear uh it shuts down the growth and it interferes with the immune system. And then look at the healthcare crisis oh. on this planet. Why? Because the fear is generated all over the place, which disempowers your biology. And, and, and so the stress hormones, cortisol, shut down the growth. And, and that puts you in a, in a precarious position. Uh, growth doesn't mean like going from child to adult. It says if you're made out of 50 trillion cells, which you are, and you're losing hundreds of billions of cells. I mean, we've lost millions of cells just having this fun conversation right now. And I say, yeah, but how many days can you go without lo you know, with losing that many cells? I go, well, not too long, you will die. I say, so what, what keeps us alive? I say, stem cells. And I say, stem cells you know, uh, cover for us, okay? But if you are in fear, you shut down the growth mechanism and every day you're losing cells, not replacing them when you're in ah. fear, you're open up. And the immune system, which uses a lot of energy, uh, if you're being chased by a saber-toothed tiger, who cares about a bacterial infection? Yeah. <laughs> if the yeah. tiger gets you, the bacteria is meaningless <laughs> at that moment. So in fear, 
you shut off the immune system, which uses a lot of energy, to get ready for fight or flight. So I said, oh, you shut down growth, you shut down the immune system, and hence this rapid rise in, in health issues entire across the planet. No matter how much money we put into healing, the health crisis is getting worse all the time because it's stress. And then let me add the last one, and this is where it returns, and it goes like this. When you're in stress, I said, how does growth shut off? I said, because stress hormones cause the blood vessels in the gut to shut. And I said, well, what does that mean? He said, well, it pushes the blood to the arms and legs where I'm going to use that to run away. So I don't need to growth. I need to run away. But so I shut down with the blood vessels. And you can feel that butterflies in the stomach when you get nervous. Right. The fluttering, the fluttering is actually the blood vessel shutting down. But here comes the big one. The, I call it insult to injury. You're, you, you just injured yourself with this cortisol. But guess what? In a, in a reaction response, as we mentioned just previously, um, conscious is too slow to respond to immediate needs. So uh, the stress hormone squeezes the blood vessels and the consciousness shut. But that pushes the blood to the hindbrain where reaction occurs. No thinking, reaction. I just so what's the relevance? The more stress you put the population in, the less intelligent they become. And the less intelligent they become and the more they're reactive they become, they'll look for somebody else to fix the problem. Holy God, the thing's going out of control. You can have the power. And it's like, oh my God, who do we give the power to? You know, and, and then all of a sudden you see, we gave up power. We, be, we lost our conscious creativity in a state of fear. And the more fear you're in, the more you will elect a leader that says, I'll beat the hell out of the other guy. It's like, huh? <laughs> so, you know, you, you, you know? You, your point's so important, what you just said. And so let's spend a minute on that, too, because here it is. Um, we have this world. I mean, it, it's like your subconscious mind. It, it's, it's in charge of everything, and it's negatively programmed, just like outside of the world. Right now, we're being uh, every day inundated with glyphosate in our food, our, our sodium fluoride in our water. We have the vaccines that are being poisonous. We have we have chemtrail. We have metals falling from the sky every day, causing all types of problems with our body and our and our land and our trees. So it seems so overwhelming that even though you're saying all this is occurring. What's, where's the inspired action for this versus do we just go within ourselves, shift our programming, and we change that reality? Or do we go out there and we say, no more, Monsanto? I mean, what, what's the balance here, Doc? Uh, the, in the old hippie days, which <laughs> I somehow remember, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which was a lot of interference in memory, but uh, <laughs> there, was a, there was a statement that said, before you take care of the world, take care of your own backyard. Mm. And so we're in an issue here. And I said, what are you going to do? I said, well, I want to go change the world. I said, first, you better change your belief system so you can go out there and change the world. First, you have to recognize how powerful you really are because you start off, I'm a victim. Then how the heck are you going to change the world? Okay. How powerful are you? Two examples. One, people can walk across hot coals. How do they do that? They darn well have a consciousness that lets them do that. If they're in the middle of the walk and momentarily let go of that consciousness and say, can I do this? Boom, they're going to get burned instantly, and that's what happens, okay? So you can walk across hot coals. But, hey, listen, uh, down south we have some Baptist fundamentalist people work themselves up in a religious ecstasy, and they do something called testify. Mm. Uh, those are the snake handlers. And they play with all these poisonous vipers. And, well, a few months ago, one of them died again. That makes big news. Snake handler dies. But most of them don't. They have no consequence. That's not even the one I want to talk about. I want to talk about some of them testify, meaning God protects me, uh, doing no matter how stupid thing I can think of, such as drink strychnine poison. And they can drink strychnine poison with the belief that God will protect me, unshakable. And don't do this with 99% belief. You need like the hundred percent. Right. I say, what, what's relevant? You can drink strychnine poison and have no harmful effects. I go, how powerful are you? And the answer is you are creating <laughs> and if you believe you can drink the strychnine. And even if you think God did it, yeah. uh, gurus do you, it all the time. They'll, they'll eat, they'll they take poison or create a tumor and then, then, then dissolve the tumor. I've, I've seen studies on that too, particularly what you're saying. It's very valid. Spontaneous remission. It was a change of belief. Once yes. it, it, two people go to the doctor, get the same diagnosis. One says, Oh my God, I'm going to die in three months because the doctor said so. And they go home. And what's their everyday fear? They're counting the calendar. What's the function of the mind? Make coherence between the belief and reality. You got a belief you're going to die in three months. Guess what? In about three months, you're going to die whether you have cancer or no mm -hmm. cancer. Mm -hmm. When they do autopsies on some of these people, they find 
they didn't die of cancer, <laughs> even though everyone thought they were going to die of cancer. Okay. So, so doc, so, you're saying going through the darkness really doesn't mean that we have to focus on the outside of us right now, but going through our own darkness, looking at our own subconscious programming, bringing light to that is really the, 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 the final frontier. Is that not the solution to everything? Absolutely. It's number one. You got to find out who you really are. If you think you're a victim, then what's life going to manifest for you? Mine says, if I'm a victim, I have to experience being a victim because victim is going to control my behavior. Okay. Uh, and it's interesting for me. Uh, look, uh, I grew up and I had a good program for being a professional. So I did really great in my research. But how did I do at home? Personal relationship? Boy, that sucked. You know, I, I, I was is he, is he crap. <laughs> you know, I wasn't a good relationship for anybody. But I first had to learn first to love myself, which I said 80 to 90 percent of the 80 to 90 percent will not test positive for that. First, I had to learn my love myself. Then I changed my relationship. Then what did I do? I reprogrammed my consciousness with what? Wishes and desires. What's that? Happiness, love, beautiful world, all that. Guess what? Once the program was in, this is the cool part. The only effort you'd have to do is put the program in because once the program is in, the system is automatically designed to manifest that program. And, and, and uh, fortunately, I met my beautiful partner, Margaret. Together, we, we recognized when a bad program came up and we experienced something like, oh, my God, who are you, Bruce? Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I said, yeah. what? <laughs> and I'll identify what it is. And then we changed the belief. Yeah. And then guess what? I, I've been living heaven on earth for 20 plus years oh, right wow. now. I wow. mean, I wrote a book called The Honeymoon Effect. A guy who couldn't keep a relationship is in 20 years of, oh my God, life is so beautiful. Yes, even in the midst of all the chaos, the crisis and all that, I am not taking that into my life. I am the butterfly building mm. rather than the caterpillar coming down. Yes, And yes. therefore, while it's coming down, it doesn't touch me because my program is building up. Right. And that's the whole story. Matching frequencies and uh, beautifully stated, because as you're saying is that uh, you help your your wife grow consciously of her. She is because she can't look at her own thoughts and she helps you grow consciously of who you are. That's how you create that. Keep that honeymoon effect and that true love vibration and frequency moving forward. Right. Absolutely, because what's the alternative? And this is the general alternative. Uh, one partner says something from subconscious. So where the hell did that come from? The other one reacts. And then there's an argument. Because the guy who even said the negative stuff didn't even know he said it. Why? It was subconscious. Uh, 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 and, uh, and I say, so what's the relevance? Well, if you understand that if the programs that are negative are coming out, they're not the person. Mm. They're the program. Right. Then you can distinguish, I love this person. I think the program sucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if we can rewrite the program, then, of course, then guess what? Those negative things will not come back up. Right. And if you put wishes and desires and they're in the function of the mind is to manifest wishes and desires. Right. You create heaven on earth with no effort. That's the cool part. The only effort is to put the program in. Once the program's in, auto, just go about your day-to-day -day life. Why? Because a subconscious with wishes and desires is supposed to, according to the mind, manifest Best. it. And yes. it does. Yep. Well, Doc, uh, so much information. Of course, we're running out of time, uh, and I just can't tell you. Uh, guys, if you first time you've seen this, do a watch party later on on Facebook or check us out on our app, uimediaapp.com. Uh, we'll be posting this, cutting it up to, and uh, getting more Bruce Lipton out there of what he shared. Uh, but, you know, you're going to be August 20th, one more time, at Unity North. Uh, you're going to be sharing this wisdom and much more live in person in Marietta, Georgia, guys, on the 20th. Um, and you'll be, uh, and guys want to get you tickets now, go get your tickets at unitynorth.org and, um, and see him in person. Give him a big hub. Big hug. I, I, if I can't get there, I will be hugging you. But, Doc, we're going to close it out right now. But can you stay on one second? I want to ask you a question about that uh, event. So, uh, guys, listen, uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. This is incredible information. Please share this with everyone you can. They got, there's a humanity that we're here for exciting times. It's not going to be the end. This is the beginning. Be the butterfly, not the caterpillar going down, but the butterfly going up. It's your choice right now. You make it. Make it right now. Okay, guys, see you again. Don't forget Dr. Krager tonight at 5 o'clock. Digital dementia. I don't want that. Stay tuned, guys. We'll see you then. Take care. Adios. You have been listening to The Good Intention Show on the UI Radio Network. The Good Intention Show is sponsored by the United Intentions Foundation at unitedintentions.org. Look for us on Blog Talk, Spreaker, iTunes, Stitcher, Player FM, and many more. 
Check us out on Facebook and Instagram under United Intentions and on Twitter at Higher Intention. Be sure to log on to unitedintentions.org, a virtual community where you learn to create, track, and manifest your passions, one intention at a time. Have a wonderful day, and until next time, live life with intent. The United Intentions Foundation and its associates take no responsibility for the opinions and statements made by the talk show hosts or their guests. 